Let's talk presidential politics. Have your voice heard at 217-629-7970. Dan, let's review this Chicago Tribune article. Use of 14th Amendment to keep Trump off 2024 ballot still under debate in Illinois. Welcome back. Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. You can always chime in either on social media, find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, on Facebook or on YouTube, where you can sound off live in the YouTube chat. Just search out Bishop on air and we can connect that way. Uh, but uh, you've got states across the country that are um, uh, you know, taking up the question of whether the 14th Amendment means that uh, former President Donald Trump can't be in office and that question even being broached here in the state of Illinois. Uh, So the Chicago Tribune delved into this. Rick Pearson reporting that uh, Attorney General Kwame Raoul uh, essentially saying that uh, he's going to let this be decided elsewhere. Here's the quote from Raoul to the Tribune. There's a lot of proceedings that are going on revolving around the factual questions that would give rise to the notion of an action based on the 14th Amendment and, as in all cases, you don't jump to the conclusion before they've been tried. Raul went on to say that he, as the chief legal officer, uh, he doesn't get to declare the conclusions of fact. He says that, uh, quote, I don't get to declare that an act of insurrection has occurred, he said. And I'm not naive that if I were to file such a lawsuit, that it would be delayed anyway because there are ongoing cases. And where are these ongoing cases? You've got them uh, sprouting up around the country, including in Colorado and Minnesota state courts, two states that uh, supported Joe Biden. And what's fascinating here in Illinois, uh, you had uh, like a 17 point difference between Biden and Trump in the 2020 election. So even if Trump was to get on the ballot, what's the uh, possibility that he would even get Illinois. Uh, So we'll see how that plays out. But all of this taking place, of course, while we uh, rapidly approach the filing period uh, for presidential candidates to get on the primary ballots, and Trump being a Republican, he's got to get on the Republican primary ballot here to Illinois. But there's a two-day filing period coming up January 5th and January 6th, where um, various candidates, you know, the the whole slates of all the Republicans and their delegates, they got to file their nominating petition signatures to get on the uh, March primary ballot. And then I imagine from there, uh, you may see this pop up. Uh, but some of the uh, the debates at hand is the language of the 14th Amendment and whether the allegations against Trump uh, rise to this level. Because remember, Trump was impeached by the Democrat-controlled House uh, on uh, inciting an insurrection for January 6th. But the Senate acquitted Trump on that charge. Uh, so he, he's not been convicted of that by the U.S. Congress and the myriad of challenges against the president in different jurisdictions across the state, four different uh, criminal cases, uh, none of those uh, allege insurrection. Uh, But the Tribune delving into the question at hand here about the 14th Amendment, Section 3, says that those who have taken an oath to uphold the Constitution as members of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state shall not be able to serve in Congress or hold any office, civil or military, if they have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution. Uh, and this was, of course, a um, post-world, uh, post-Civil War uh, amendment that uh, was meant to try to keep insurrectionists uh, from uh, you know, essentially becoming elected officials. What do you think of this effort uh, that's happening across the uh, across the country in some states? And do you think that Illinois would move forward with such a, an effort to block Trump from being on the ballot? 217-629-7970. That's the phone number again, 217-629-7970. Trump has said on his Truth Social Network that... Uh, he uh, he considers the 14th Amendment lawsuits as just another trick being used by the radical left communist Marxist and fascists to, again, steal an election. Uh, so Trump uh, making those statements on social media. Uh, I imagine that we'll hear a lot more revving up around all of this. Uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. 217-629-7970. Is this just part of the uh, the kitchen sink approach that uh, you think Democrats are trying to implement where they're throwing everything at the former president? I mean, all this in the context of 
the former president, according to a, a recent poll, is 10 points above Biden. Now, whether or not that poll is legitimate, I mean, it had like a margin of error of like three and a half points or whatever, but even in the margin of error, that would still put Trump, you know, more than six points ahead of Biden, uh, according to, I think it was the Washington Post, ABC. Uh, So your thoughts, 217-629-7970. Again, 217-629-7970. We'll get to some of your calls coming up here in just a moment about whether or not you think that this 14th Amendment situation is legitimate and a good question to ask, or if you think it's part of the kitchen sink approach of Democrats throwing everything they can at Trump from, you know, impeachments to to Russia hoax allegations, to Stormy Daniels and other uh, criminal cases, trying to you know overturn an election uh, and a whole host of other things. Plus, looking at the 14th Amendment, let's get to your phone calls coming up at 217-629-7970. That's the phone number again, 217-629-7970. Phone lines are open for you to sound off if you think that the 14th Amendment arguments some are trying to implement across the country to block former President Donald Trump from the ballot is a uh, pipe dream or if it's a realistic uh, approach. Uh, Good morning. Back at it. 217-629-7970. That's the phone number. You can always sound off as well by uh, either joining the chat on YouTube, just search Bishop on Air and watch live, or you can email me, bishoponair at gmail.com. Uh, text coming in from a listener, has Trump been charged, let alone convicted of insurrection? No. Uh, the Democrats and the propagandists in the media made up the allegation and reported as truth the party of intolerance fears Trump refusing to allow citizens the right to vote for their preferred candidate is clearly anti-American. Uh, so you've got uh, that being part of the equation uh, from a listener. Uh, and uh, no, the president has not been convicted of uh, such a such a crime as insurrection. And I think that that's the crux here, right? It's uh, it's something that uh, while they may say, "Oh, well, he's charged with it," you're innocent until proven guilty. I mean, if you're if you're going to be saying people uh, charged, uh, you know, caught stealing stuff from a convenience store is innocent until proven guilty and able to get out on cash bond. I mean, you got to give that same consideration to somebody else. And by the way, Trump's not been charged with insurrection. He was actually found innocent of insurrection by the U.S. Senate after the House tried to impeach the president, or they did impeach, but uh, they couldn't convict in the Senate. So, yeah, well, he, he has not been charged with insurrection uh, in a criminal court. Uh, so where do you stand on this? Is the 14th Amendment a pipe dream, or is it something to further muddy the waters? Uh, good morning. You're on WMAY. Your thoughts? Morning, Bishop. Hey. That's when you're trying to muddy the waters. I don't know. Well, I do know. These guys are scared to death of this man. They are scared to death of what this man is going to do to them. He knows more than he's telling, I believe. And when he gets in the president, if he wins, hopefully he does. If he can keep his mouth shut, he'd be probably the best president we ever had. But uh, if he gets in there, I have a feeling that a lot, a lot of stuff's going to go down. Well, what do you what do you think? Like he's going to go after uh, those who went after him, type of thing. Like there's going to be broad investigations. There's going to be broad, and- broad, broad investigations. Yes, especially against the Bidens, which I know there already are. I wouldn't say broad, but there are investigations against the the double standards in this country have are. I mean, it is absolutely. I I literally get anxiety sometimes just thinking about the double standards that people do not see it It, it's mind-blowing to me at how some of these people either are that stupid or they just have that big of blinders on or they just don't care i don't know which of the three it is but it's literally when it comes to actions against political opponents, I mean, recall that during the Trump-Clinton debate, what was it? Trump said, you know, uh, something about uh, you'd be in jail if uh, if Trump was president. I can't remember the exact uh, back and forth, but it was one of those lines where it was like Trump thinking on his feet and everyone, oh, ho, ho. Uh, so there were concerns, you know, with especially the chance of lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. Trump got into office and left Hillary Clinton alone. 
left her alone. But know, he then under surprised. he underwent, you know, years of the Trump Russia collusion, was impeached twice, now is facing four different uh, you know, jurisdictions with criminal charges, totally I think like ninety different criminal charges or something like that. Now this fourteenth amendment argument. Uh so You know what though, Greg? He got in president instead of worrying about her, he did his job as a president. He went and, and that's what he did. He did his job as a president. He wasn't concerned about her. He just said, you know what, I'm gonna do my job, I'm gonna work for the Americans, which we don't have now with, with any of these guys. No. In all honesty, I think the two-party system needs to go away completely, but that's a whole other topic. That is a whole other topic for another day. Hey, I appreciate the call. Let's get more of your calls at 217-629-7970. Again, 217-629-7970. Uh, you can also message me via Twitter or Facebook or even uh, email. Just search Bishop on Air, and we can connect that way. Uh, seeing uh, any calls coming in, uh, of course, 217-629-7970. That's the phone number here. And uh, interested to see what some of the uh, the commenters uh, have to say, uh, but of course you can uh, do that live and local on WMAY. Again, 217-629-7970. Let's go to the phones. Good morning. You're on WMAY. You're on the air. Hello. Go ahead. Hi. Okay, this thing about Trump, they need to quit picking on him. If it hadn't been for Donald Trump, I would not have had a, bo- have had a job. All right? It's Elaborate a little it bit more. Like you, every, go ahead. Yeah. It seems like last few presidents we had, they come up with an excuse to indict him. And I don't see that Donald Trump didn't do anything wrong. He did the best he could. If he would have kept his mouth shut, he would have had a better chance of winning the election. Well, I mean, listen, you know, one thing that I think uh, you get a lot of criticism of uh, Joe Biden is that he doesn't uh, speak to the media enough, uh, that he is not uh, somebody who is, you know, answering questions or talking enough. Uh, and uh, while a lot of people say, oh, the mean tweets from Trump were just uh, deplorable, there's that word, uh, is that really, uh, you think, what uh, what led this uh, this? Uh, rather toxic effort against the former president. Uh, you know, I mean, protests out the wazoo, uh, the the movement to try to you know remove him from the ballots using the Fourteenth Amendment. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of passion. Uh, some people may criticize as being misplaced, but who knows? I mean, if, if Trump doesn't get the nomination, which he's leading the Republican field, he's not going to be part of the Republican debate this week. Because he's got, he's up like forty five percent over you know the the number two person in the uh, in the race for the Republicans, um, but uh, say he doesn't get the nomination. Say that uh, even Biden doesn't get the nomination. You've got former governor of uh, uh, rather Florida governor Ron DeSantis and uh, California governor Gavin Newsom set to debate <laughs> on Fox News in late November. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, let's go ahead and get to a couple of calls here at 217-629-7970. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. I am anti-Trump 100%. However, I don't think the 14th Amendment should come into play because he has not been convicted of... Uh, Insurrection. What do I want to say? Thank you. <laughs> So um, I think if he wants to run, he should be able to run and it be left up to the American people. So. In, in a state like Illinois, uh, as I said, I think Trump lost the state of Illinois by like 17 points. So uh, the voters clearly yeah. in Illinois had their say. Correct. I Take it back to the people, let the people decide. So he hasn't been convicted of any anything regarding insurrection. He may be convicted of something by the time the election comes around, but the 14th Amendment shouldn't come into play. Let the people decide. Appreciate the call. Um, and uh, obviously, we're going to be watching all this play out uh, as the nominating petitions come together for presidents and their delegates to get on the primary ballot here in Illinois, let alone uh, all across the, the country uh, when it comes to uh, the, the primaries that are going to be popping off. Uh, in the spring of 2024. I can't believe we're (laughs) 
from one election to the next. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, follow me anywhere. Bishop on air. Uh, just search via X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube and so on. Um, looks like uh, we've got a few comments here on YouTube I want to touch on that uh, we've got. Um the problem is the 14th Amendment seals with insurrection against the Constitution. It won't go anywhere, as the rest of the politicians would have to concede that they, too, would need to leave office. That's an interesting comment. Uh, same commenter says, uh, as passing proven unconstitutional laws without amending the Constitution would be considered insurrection against the Constitution. Uh, the South seceded and did not uprise against the government. Okay, that's an interesting thought. Um, another commenter says Trump lost in Illinois because the Illinois GOP is anti-Trump. That's another interesting thought. Uh, so just a collection of uh, different responses to this question about uh, whether or not the 14th Amendment is indeed a uh, legitimate move to try to remove Trump from the ballot or if it's a pipe dream. So appreciate you guys sounding